Hey everybody, it's Brian Angusa here, coach and nutritionist at Triage Method. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about collagen protein, right? Collagen protein is something that is often discussed. Clients often ask me questions about it. People on social media often ask me questions about it. There's a lot of hype around it. So I want to go through today whether or not collagen is actually just hype and there's not that much benefit to it. Or maybe is there some truth to the claims being made about collagen protein. And there's also a discussion around collagen in this context of joint health and well-being and, and reducing pain in, in certain joints and connective tissues potentially like helping connective tissues recover or heal. So let us actually get into that stuff. Before we get started though, let's actually consider what collagen actually is. So collagen is a protein and it's actually the most abundant protein in the body. It's a main structural component of the skin as well as connective tissues like ligaments, tendons, and cartilage. So there are many types of collagen, but we're only going to discuss three main types as they're the ones that tend to appear most commonly in a supplementation context. So we've got types one and three, which are mostly found in the skin, and we've got type two collagen, which is mostly found in the joints and connective tissue. So collagen is somewhat unique in terms of the protein stores because it has an amino acid profile that is quite different to a lot of the commonly consumed proteins, things like eggs or muscle meats that we usually consume. So it has high levels of the amino acids, hydroxyproline, glycine, and proline. And these potentially have their own unique benefits as well. And glycine, for example, has been suggested to improve sleep quality. And collagen itself is about 25 to 30 percent glycine so if you were to consume say 10 grams of collagen per day it's going to give you about three grams of glycine and the effective dose for glycine to improve sleep based on the limited amount of research seems to be about three to five grams so what sort of claims are actually made about collagen supplementation like what are the marketing guys telling you that's going to happen if you use xyz collagen protein a collagen something's a big business okay at the time of this recording it's estimated that the value at about 3.5 billion euro, okay? So a lot of money involved in these types of supplements. And that's from the case, especially age. I think there's beauty entering the conversation or anti-aging. There's a huge market for that stuff. And these are some of the main claims made about collagen supplementation. It's implicated potentially in anti-aging, supporting better skin health. And then also, as I mentioned earlier, joint pain, joint health overall. And the evidence does seem to suggest that collagen supplementation, specifically type 1 and 3 collagen, can actually improve skin health. So it can improve skin elasticity, it can maybe reduce wrinkling. Albeit these effects are quite modest, you're looking at less than a 10% increase in these sort of metrics. Four small doses of collagen in around the 10 grams per day, but as low as 3 grams per day. Or things like joint pain or connective tissue health, it seems that the undenatured type 2 collagen, which I often see as UC2, does seem to improve things like pain in this context. A difference here is that this UC2 collagen is used in very, very small doses, only around 40 milligrams per day. Okay, so that's quite a difference compared to the 3 to 10 grams of, of hydrolyzed collagen of the type 1 and type 3. And I hypothesize that this type 2 collagen helps modulate pain via interactions with the immune system. So the fact that it's actually not hydrolyzed is an important feature here. And again, it does seem to have modest benefits in the context of, say, joint pain and overall joint health. So collagen is a protein powder. By now you know that much. So what about collagen and its role in something like muscle gain? So collagen does not seem to be a useful protein for muscle building purposes because it comes back to this amino acid profile. I said earlier that collagen is somewhat unique in its amino acid profile. It's high in certain amino acids like glycine, but then it's also low in the branched chain amino acids, which are quite important in terms of regulating muscle protein synthesis. So collagen is not going to be a go-to option if you're trying to maximize muscle gain. But I don't think this is a fair point to, you know, say that collagen is just not useful. I think it's like saying, well, you shouldn't eat apples because they're not high in vitamin C. You should just eat oranges. Okay. Well, you know, you're comparing apples to oranges there. In terms of collagen protein versus something like whey protein, which people are way more familiar with in the context of, say, muscle gain and muscle recovery, they just perform two different functions. So I don't think one is better than the other necessarily. It just depends what sort of job you're asking it to do. So while collagen is not a great in terms of a muscle building protein, it does seem to have certain benefits. 
And one of those as well potentially can be that it'll help recovery from injury if it's consumed before, say, exercise. Collagen is often combined with vitamin C as well because vitamin C is actually involved in the natural synthesis of collagen in the body. So that's worth considering. If you're trying to decide uh, which collagen should I use, I'm kind of sold on the benefits. So what's the one that I go for? Well, it depends on what kind of job you want it to do. If you're looking at it from the skin health perspective or anti-aging perspective, then you probably want to go for the type 1 and type 3 hydrolyzed collagen, okay? The hydrolysis just means that it's partially broken down, so it's just easier to digest, basically. And if you're trying to use collagen in the context of joint pain, joint health, then it seems like the type 2 undenatured collagen, which means it's not hydrolyzed, I could say unhydrolyzed collagen either, those would mean the same thing, um, is, is the better option from that point of view. A question we often get as well is collagen vegan? Can you get vegan collagen? So collagen, as is usually sold, is isolated from pig, cow, or marine sources, okay? So obviously those are not vegan options. You will see some collagen products being advertised as vegan collagen. Now, oftentimes they're not actually in collagen, they're just the different cofactors that are involved in the actual synthesis of collagen in the body. So not really delivering what you think you're getting with them. So they'll have things like vitamin C in there, like I mentioned earlier. But then there is also some innovation going on around making collagen from certain types of yeast and bacteria. So if that's the vegan collagen that you're looking at and it says this is how it's been produced, then that actually could be a good option. As a nutritionist, I'm obviously quite big on taking a food first approach. So what's the story with collagen in that context? Can't I just get it from the diet? Why are we talking about supplementation? Well, you can certainly get collagen and gelatin from the diet, okay? But it's usually found in foods that are not that commonly consumed for various reasons. So, for example, the skin and the bones of fish. So if you get like canned sardines or canned salmon, some of those will have some skin in there. The bones will be steamed, so they will be edible. And that will be actually a good source of collagen. Now, a lot of people don't eat oily fish, but if you do, then that is a great source of those nutrients plus omega-3s plus high quality protein. Such a good food to have if, you know, if they suit your taste. You'll also get certain amounts of collagen and gelatin on meat that's on the bone or that has some skin on it. Now, again, people maybe don't eat those types of protein sources as often, so you may not be getting that much of those in the diet. Therefore, supplementation might be a good option for you. You can also make your own stock or bone broth, as it's often referred to, and from the bones or carcasses of animals, and that will actually be quite rich in gelatin, and you can consume that as an adjunct to your diet without having to get collagen supplements potentially. I will say as well, it's important to note that a lot of the research on collagen is funded by the collagen industry, okay? So that, yeah, we always have to take that into account when we're looking at efficacy of certain supplements, etc. So the last word on collagen from me for today, you know, it fits nicely into a balanced diet, I think. You know, if you're, if you're to take 10 grams of collagen per day from a supplemental source, I think that's a pretty smart move. And it does fit very nicely into my risk versus reward formula. You know, with something like collagen supplements, there's no real risk in terms of consuming them. All you have to do is buy them, and that's about as far as the risk goes. But then there are a lot of potential benefits. So it's quite a large upside for essentially no downside. And that formula is something I'll use a lot when trying to make recommendations, trying to do coaching work for clients. You know, is this recommendation I'm going to make, is there a potential reward involved? In this case, there is. But is it high risk? In this case, no, it's not. And that's a pretty sweet spot to be in. I think all you need to just watch out for on this is that you're getting obviously the, the right collagen for you and then that you're not overpaying for underdose collagen products because some products will only be about one gram of collagen these maybe little collagen shots or something like that and you know you're not going to get an effective amount of collagen and they're often sold again in this beauty context which seems to add quite an extortionate price tag to supplements and all sorts of products so just be wary of that you want to get say 10 to 15 grams per day of a hydrolyzed type 1 or type 3 collagen often they're combined or if you're looking at the joint support, joint pain consideration, then the undenatured type 2 collagen can be something to try out at around 40 milligrams per day. So that about does it for me and this collagen conversation. Or if you have any experience with collagen or any further questions about collagen, we'd love to see them in the comments. But if not, then make sure you're following, subscribe for more health, nutrition, and fitness content.